Benjamin Franklin Medal is one of the world's oldest science and technology awards and often dubbed the American Nobel Prize. And this year, on May 22nd, it was announced that Philip Kim, a professor at Harvard University, was awarded the prize in the field of physics for his groundbreaking research related to graphene and materials that are a single atom thick. He is the first Korean national who has been honoured with this award. Uh, just before the medal as well, he was also elected as a member of the National Academy of Sciences, becoming only the sixth Korean member. To tell us uh, more about these feats and his research, I'm delighted to say that Professor Kim joins us now via video call for this week's Touch Basins Hall. Professor Kim, hello and welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having me here. Okay, so I've given a brief introduction, but can you uh, also briefly introduce yourself for our listeners as well in your own words? Okay, so I'm Philip Kim, that, uh, working at the Harvard University, teaching physics and doing the research in um, condensed matter physics. So I'm basically a physicist. <laughs> okay, and uh, as we said, you've uh, had an illustrious career now, award-winning career, uh, but Going back to your studies, how did you first get into the field of physics? What made you interested in it in the first place? Wow. Okay. So that uh, dated back to kind of when I was young. Um, uh, I found a lot of the physics book in my house, although my father and my grandfather were not physicists. But then later that uh, uh, I found out that uh, both of them actually had a cherished dream as being a physicist, although... Uh, due to the, all these kind of difficult times in back in the Korean history, they couldn't study the physics. So somehow I got drawn into physics uh, by the influence of my grandfather and my father, who just kind of put a lot of physics book <laughs> nearby. Um, so when I just get into the college, I, it's very natural for me just to get into the physics. And from there on, that I just kind of doing the physics. Right, so just having those books in the household that inspired you, but perhaps uh, it was in your blood as well uh, that you wanted to study physics as uh, your father and grandfather, as you said, was so interested in it. Uh, and then uh, you studied it in Korea and then uh, you moved to the US as well to continue your studies, right? That's right. So uh, I was kind of grown up in Korea and did uh, the bachelor degree and master degree in Korea. And uh, uh, when I was 26, I came to States uh, uh, to continue my PhD study. And then you've been teaching as well, right? So that must have been uh, quite a jump, uh, quite a, uh, a leap uh, for you as well, uh, as coming from Korea uh, and then going to the US to teach as well. Yeah, I think uh, so. usually uh, the typical uh, physicist job uh, in the uh, universities uh, required after PhD, you have the brief moment of the um, uh, postdoc training. And then uh, once you get the job in the university, that becomes kind of part of the job description. Although mm. um, in the big research university, research takes kind of a lot of the, uh, the weight that's there as well. But teaching becomes one of the essential part of the job description. So I have to basically uh, the pick up the skill of how to teach and how to interact with the students. That becomes kind of fun one part of the, my job. Well, the reason, of course, that we are connecting with you today is because you uh, won the Benjamin Franklin Medal, and congratulations on that. What was it like to win? Did you even know that you were in contention for the prize? Oh, first of all, thank you very much for that <laughs> yes, uh, kind of word. Um, uh, I got in contact in uh, uh, end of the last year 2022 that right. they, they told me that uh, i was um uh, i was uh, selected for the, the award of the 2023 uh benjamin franklin uh, matter in the physics um so that was about kind of three or four months uh, before that actual award the ceremony so uh, but nevertheless uh, that's kind of first time i learned and i was really shocked and uh especially just kind of looking through the uh, the the past awardees uh, which kind of all been names, I was kind of really uh, shocked and humbled by this uh, the, the award. Right, and you were given the award for your groundbreaking research uh, into graphene and uh, a single atom 
thick uh, materials. Can you explain a bit more for our listeners uh, about your research, uh, helping us with uh, some layman's terms as well? <laughs> yeah, let me try. So uh, I've been interested in to the, um, the materials that are called the low dimensional materials. And uh, low dimension means that since we live in the three dimension, anything smaller than three, like the two and one, even zero dimension, is something that, um, that we describe certain class uh, of the materials. And often uh, this material is either extremely thin, uh, like uh, atomic thickness of the thin materials, or uh, it can be extremely narrow, becomes kind of tube and wires of um, a few atom wide. And uh, this type of the material has been uh, discovered and synthesized over the probably 20 or uh, past 20 or 30 years. Hmm. Um, out of the particular materials uh, form the layered structures. I think good example is a graphite. Um, often you find out um, the pencil lead uh, made of the graphite. But if you just kind of look at the details of the graphite, it consists of the uh, many, many layers of the atomic layers. And each of the single atomic sheet is what we call the graphene. Um, that basically the uh, com combination of this layer form the, uh, the uh, three-dimensional graphite structures. So if somehow that extracted this a single layer of the graphene, the property of the material is very different from the what you often just kind of see in the bulk scale. Mm. Um, and they were that uh, the particularly interesting quantum mechanical phenomena appears in such a, uh, confined structures. And that has been my kind of major interest in the, my research. Right. And what is it about this uh, single or very thin layered uh, uh, materials that has gotten uh, the science world so excited? Uh, graphene, uh, it's being considered a remarkable material, so much so that the 2010 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to scientists who did research on graphene as well, uh, Andre Game and Konstantin Novoselov, uh, I believe. Uh, so what is it about this material that uh, could change our world, essentially? Yeah, um, uh, discovery of graphene actually shook this uh, research field in the sense that uh, before discovery of graphene by this uh, two uh, initiator, the Konstantin Novoselov and Andre Gaim. Uh, many physicists, uh, many scientists actually believe that it's uh, uh, probably virtually impossible to get this uh, single sheet of atoms um, that, uh, extracted from the bulk material. And um, but the, despite of the, this uh, this uh, disbelief, and uh, some some people, including this uh, Nobel duo and that also uh, myself. Uh, work on to the, this, uh, find out the uh, single sheet of the graphene. And um, uh, that we did uh, they find out, uh, the community did find out that uh, those kind of single sheet of graphene. And uh, then not only existence of the, this uh, very thin form of the, uh, the materials, uh, the physics appears there is a very different from what we normally observe in the, um, uh, in the bulk system. Hmm. For example, the electron moves extremely fast and without any scattering. Uh, such a behavior of the electron potentially can be used for the, this novel electronic device uh, that could replace the silicon type of the devices. And that's such a possibility of the providing this new material really uh, make the many scientists quite excited. Right, so it could change uh, all the electronic technology that we know today, essentially, if uh, this research goes on the path that it is uh, on the moment, right? Well, potentially, I would say that uh, the uh, uh, there is uh, some potentials that indeed uh, the part of the graphene or that uh, similar other two D materials mm. may uh, make a breakthrough into the, this electronic uh, the applications. Uh, whether it will come into the future or not is a way to see that in, uh, uh, next generation of the research. And you have been a key. Uh, experts in this field uh, uh, pushing that uh, research forward so much so in fact that uh, i understand that andre game who uh, won the nobel prize in 2010 he mentioned that you had made an important contribution that and he would uh, gladly have shared the nobel prize uh, with you as well <laughs> what were your thoughts on his comments yeah i think well, he's very nice of, uh, it's a very nice of him to say that <laughs> i mean indeed uh, that uh, in the beginning of the graphene research uh, uh, there, there has been some competitions and collaborations between the uh, Gaim's group and my group. Uh, it has been always kind of fun time. 
But nevertheless, I think the contributions they made is really decisive mm. and ahead of uh, in my group's uh, the contribution. So I kind of believe that they deserve very well for the, this uh, seminar discovery of the graphene. Uh, but nevertheless, including my group as well as others in the research communities, uh, continue to work on the uh, many interesting property of the graphene and their applications hmm. and the extensions of the graphene on, onto the other 2D materials. So it has been really kind of fun time in past probably 15 or 20 years after discovery of the graphene, how the, this research can be expanded into the uh, various uh, different directions and different uh, type of hmm. the new materials start to appear. That has been really kind of a fantastic time. So in other words, he didn't share the prize with you in the end? <laughs> <laughs> well, even if he was, I think that's a, that's committed. Sure, of course. Decision. Okay, but still, uh, you were recognized with the Brent, uh, Benjamin Franklin Medal. What does that mean to you to have it recognized uh, with that award? Yeah, it was uh, it, it was indeed a great honor. Um, um, especially, I think uh, I was glad that uh, the part of my contributions onto the dispute is recognized by uh, uh, by, uh, by my colleagues as well as committees. I think uh, uh, it's been kind of really exciting time, and also give me a little bit more spurs to mm. kind of uh, go to the next phase of the research. Right. So then, what comes next? Uh, what is next? for the field of uh, research into graphene and are you going to be continued to be involved in it as well oh yeah sure of course um so graphene is a, a one of the really good example of so-called quantum materials when uh, the material form the extreme form such as an extreme thin extremely small uh, very different uh, type of the behavior appears due to the quantum mechanics um, the, I'm keep looking for the new type of the materials where such a quantum effect can be uh, really uh, manifest themselves. Uh, uh, themselves. Uh, that kind of give us the, the physicists the wonder as well as the potentials of the using for the new applications. Well, we wish you luck on your research and congratulations once again on winning the Benjamin Franklin Medal. Uh, we'll leave it there. We've been speaking to Professor Philip Kim at Harvard University. Thank you once again for your time today. Thank you very much.